Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Startup Sense podcast. This is your host, Jonah Lupton. Thank you so much for joining us today. Of course, we're bringing you another great episode, which we're going to jump into a second. Just want to uh, give a little context here. So today we're going to be talking with Noah Santos. He is the founder of a company called Home Polish. The website is homepolish.com. Uh, they have a huge Instagram following. So I would also recommend if you're into interior design and decorations, definitely go check them out on Instagram. Uh, the company's raised about $20 million. They have 65 employees uh, headquartered in New York. Uh, company's growing incredibly fast. Uh, they're essentially a platform for interior designers. So they're providing lead gen to those designers and obviously uh, a great service to the customers they're helping. Uh, a couple of notable investors that kind of stand out are Jennifer Hyman. She is the co-founder of Rent the Runway, which I'm sure many of our listeners probably know of as well as uh, Andy Hunt, who is one of the co-founders of Warby Parker. So pretty cool companies right there. Well, let's welcome Noah to the show. Noah, how are you, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for joining us today. So tell us about your company, Home Polish. Sure. So we started Home Polish in 2012, and the, the purpose really was to help people feel better about the way they live and work. So we connect uh, those people with interior designers across the country for uh, an in-home luxury experience. Uh, so in addition to you know providing a, an interior design experience for uh, people all over the country now, uh, we really provide a full service experience for our designers as well, really as uh, the, the largest management agency for interior design talent. What motivated you to start this company? And maybe tell us what were you doing before this? Yeah, so I, I, I originally am from Hawaii and, and studied business and architecture at Stanford, and and I moved to New York and worked in sort of the high end interior design space. And and what I loved about it was how profound of an impact as an interior designer you can have on someone's life if you if you craft for them a home or an office that they really love. Um, what what I didn't like about it was how the service itself was just so much about how much money you needed to spend, and it was really relegated to the top one percent. And and I thought, you know, if, if something this important uh, could be accessible to, you know, virtually everyone, um, I think, in, you know, interior design could have, a, a, as a as a profession, such a, a much larger reach. And so I decided to to start Home Polish. <laughs> awesome. And when did you guys raise that first round of capital? Uh, so we bootstrapped for about three and a half years, you know, building a profitable business. The great thing about about you know services marketplace. Uh, and then we raised in early 2016 from Andy and, and a few other people. I mean, how were you able to bootstrap it for so long? Did you have a lot of people on the team just working for equity or did you have some cash saved up? <laughs> no, honestly, I think because we were offering a premium service, you know, we we are accessible, but not, you know, for some people, maybe not necessarily affordable. Like we we are really, you know, for us, a cash flow positive business. Um, and it really was taking that cash, investing it in the right way, um, and scaling intelligently at a healthy clip rather than, you know, just trying to chase uh, page viewers, you know, page views or some kind of vanity metric. What's the old school way that people would find an interior designer or decorator? Yeah, for, for a long time, interior design was just a referral word of mouth business. And frankly, that, that still is a really great way to hear about an interior designer because the best way to experience interior design is to walk into someone's home and and watch them light up when they talk about how you know profound of an experience it was um but for, for a while that was the only way to actually uh, achieve new clients and grow a business uh, and home polish really brings kind of the modern day technology and marketing to the industry so whether it's our you know 1.4 million people on instagram um or you know targeted marketing, all of, all of the kind of tactics that you would expect from a modern company. So let's kind of walk through the service here. So let's say I buy a, a condo in Boston, you know, 1,200 square feet. And, you know, me personally, I don't know anything about fashion, and I certainly know even <laughs> less about interior design. So I would come to your website, create an account, and then what happens after that? Yeah, you'd create an account. You'd give us some information, so your address, uh, talk to us about your style, about the scope of the project, budget. Um, working style, et cetera. And then we really hand match you with a designer. And that designer would meet you in your home for a consultation. And if you two got along, then we just really charge a flat hourly rate. So that designer is going to give you uh, a proposal that includes all of the to-dos that you want to do. Um, and uh, whether it's just accessorizing or whether it's a complete gut renovation, we kind of handle soup to nuts everything. 
And is that is that fee or that rate, that hourly rate, um, the same across the country? Right now it is. It's $130 an hour regardless of, of uh, where you live, but uh, that's about to change pretty soon. It'll be, you know, depend on geography. It'll depend on designers because we have designers who are just starting out. We have designers who are extremely established, and, and we actually only accept about 5% of designers that apply. We have a wait list of about 1,000 designers right now. Wow. Okay, so what are some of the criteria to, to get into the platform as a designer? We, we look at a couple of main categories. One, obviously, taste level and style. Um, you know, Home Polish doesn't have a specific aesthetic. We like everything from super modern to super traditional. Um, but obviously, you know, a taste level is something that transcends time and, and specific style. Uh, we also look for skill level. So, you know, whether you can use certain programs to help clients visualize a design project, et cetera. And then uh, we look for personality and working style. So are you going to give our customers an experience uh, that is really in line with what we stand for as a brand. So let's go back to, you know, this condo that I imagine, there, you know, just, just yeah. <laughs> happened to buy. Um, and it's a blank canvas, so I need couches and tables and chairs and lamps and everything else you can possibly imagine. Now, that designer, I assume, is going to help me find the right, you know, product or whatnot for my taste. And then are they going to, do they typically place the orders for me and, and what they use my credit card, and then um, like how how does, <laughs> how does it actually work? And do they typically make money off of the item? Like, are they buying the couch at wholesale, and then they're getting a commission on it? So our designers, you know, because they charge by the hour, we want we want to make sure that we're really careful with how they're using their time. They should be using their time that the client is paying for just for design work. So we actually layer on what we call the home polish concierge, which is a full service concierge, whether it's uh, placing product orders or helping you manage tracking and shipping, all of those things that your designer who you're paying for, you, you know, you're not paying for those hours. And the concierge okay. comes for free. Uh, oh. And so for most of our clients, we handle the entire order placing just so, you know, in addition to getting our clients the best prices, we also get the best treatment. You know, we're one of West Elm and, and Restoration Harvard's largest clients globally. So anytime something happens, uh, you know, we have VIP representation there to make sure that our clients get that kind of that you know home polish standard of service. Right. Okay. So I was just going to actually I was just going to ask about some of the furniture manufacturers because I'm sure that they uh, they would love to work with home polish and many designers <laughs> yeah. that you have on the platform. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we're right now essentially the largest network of vetted and curated designers uh, globally, and so so for furniture vendors, whether it's you know small a small artisanal vendors or or big vendors like like a, you know one of the big five restoration hardware or whatnot, um, you know they're all they're all pretty eager to get in front of uh, our our network of designers. Very cool. So, what's been the biggest challenge for you guys since you started this company back in the 2012s? Well, you know I think the biggest challenge is you know not falling into the the trap that a lot of startups fall into, which is you know right out of the gate raising a lot of capital, uh, sort of chasing the top line uh, at all costs and and making sacrifices on the quality of the experience of the brand. And, you know, there, there's always kind of that, uh, that, there's always kind of that incentive to let's go, you know, be flashy, let's go try to enter the, the unicorn territory and build a business that, you know, you risk, right. risk collapsing under its own weight. And for us, it, you know, I'm really glad that we have you know, we've built pretty rapidly, but we've always done so with the mindset of like we need to build profitably. Now, you guys raised twenty million from you know a couple of angel investors that I mentioned in the in the earlier call or the the intro. Uh, how did what was your approach to the investors? What was your strategy for finding the right people that you think could be good partners? Well, I think it's just that right. You know, they are partners, and you have to make sure that you're making the right choices. It's I mean, frankly easier to get out of a marriage than it is an investor relationship. And so I think, you know, for me, it was about cultivating the relationships over a long enough period of time that I could, uh, I could stand by my investors and, and be excited for them to join the company, just like they were excited to join. So I had known Andy for over two years at the time. Uh, we decided to, to take on the investments from him. And, and, quite, and similarly, most of the investors um, that, that we've raised from, I, I've known for quite some time. This is Jonah Lupton, founder of Jewel and host of the Startup Sense podcast. At Jewel, we help entrepreneurs and startup founders build, launch, and grow their companies 
by providing superior technology, marketing, and consulting services. We help clients of all sizes, budgets, and industries. We put our clients in the best position to raise capital, grow revenues, hire employees, and maximize their profits. For more information or to set up a free consultation with our team, please visit our website at jewel.net. That's J-O-O-L dot net. So Andy and Jennifer have both built, you know, two extremely disruptive companies in their industries. You know, I think anyone that has followed their path certainly admires what they've done. What's some of the best advice that they've given you over the last few years or since they became investors? Yeah, I think it's hands down about hiring it's about creating a, a rock solid culture and making sure that you don't compromise on those things. Um, I, I think uh, ultimately the quality of the company you're building is, is just the sum of the, uh, it's more hopefully than the sum of its parts, but it's down to the quality of the people that you bring on board. And so for us, it's really understanding uh, who we want to bring on board, what the scope of their responsibilities are, and making sure that they're an incredibly uh, uh, great culture fit. So what's been your strategy for finding those people? I mean, you have a, a pretty big team right now, 65 people. Are they all in New York? No, we have, um, we have a few people in uh, Austin as well where, where we have oh. sort of a, a second office. Okay. So where do you typically recruit them from? Um, it's kind of all over, honestly. I mean, one of the great things about having the kind of visibility we have in the press, media, and social media is that that a lot of really interesting, talented, and eager people come to us. And so that's a really, we have a nice, healthy pipeline to, you know, across all the different functions of the, of the company. But, you know, for, for some positions, frankly, you, you have to go out and you have to be very targeted. And, and I'll go look at companies that I admire or I think that have, have done a really good job. And I either meet with their executives or, or, or sometimes, honestly, I will try to recruit directly from their teams. <laughs> what are your what are your goals for this company moving forward? I mean, that could be short term, you know, this year or or beyond this year. Yeah, I mean, in the shorter term, we're really, really investing in technology and product. I think we've built an incredible services business, a services marketplace that has you know, a pretty profound product and reach. And, and it's about layering on the applications, the technology and product that is going to make the home polish experience, whether it's planning for your space or project managing a, a, an existing space. Uh, a lot easier and more enjoyable. That's really what we're investing on in the short term. In the longer term, it's, it's the interior design market is really kind of a gateway to the retail and lifestyle services market. And so for us, it's, it's investing in, uh, in the interior design experience because it unlocks such a rich and long-lasting relationship with our customers that we can you know, really truly invest in over the long run. So I think you mentioned the pre-call, and I forget if we mentioned this number already during the interview, but uh, I think you said you have about 600 interior designers on the platform now. Yep, yep. Are they, are they spread out throughout the country, or are they uh, heavily concentrated in any particular areas? No, I mean, New York City is still our largest market, um, but they are spread out uh, about 15 different cities across the, uh, across the country. And I know Instagram is probably a, a good source of customer acquisition uh, for home polish, but what else have you guys been doing? Any sort of, any other marketing channels that are paying off? Yeah, I'm, I'm marketing channels, you know, for us, we've always tried to spend as little as possible on, on customer acquisition that way. Um, our, our honestly, frankly, best channel, um, is referral. Um, so, you know, just like you, you imagined, you know, walking into someone's house and, and you, you know, find a designer that way for us, it's really actually investing in our existing customers and, whether it's like throwing them a housewarming party or, uh, you know, get, getting them uh, to gift design, uh, design time to their friends, that's really a sort of a, an important tactic that we've doubled down on because who else to better advocate your, for your company than your current customers? Right. Have you guys played around any ambassador or affiliate programs? Yeah, we, we have. Um, very lightly because for a while we didn't have the technology resources to actually do that, but now that we have – a pretty robust product and technology team. We're, we're building out referral, affiliate, all of those kind of things so that it's just an easier way for our customers who have an amazing experience with us to, to spread the word. Oh, absolutely. No doubt about that. Uh, what, what's been your favorite moment or favorite day or favorite story from the last few years? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> try to throw at least a couple um, curveballs in there. It's also a tough one because I have the memory of a goldfish. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think... Well, one of my favorite moments of, of late, at least, 
has been moving into our new space in, in the Flatiron. Uh, you know, we've been in Flatiron and, and Nomad for for actually the entire history of the company. But six months ago, we moved into what I would call like our adolescent sort of grown up ish office. Um, and you know, it was a project that we worked on for th three or four months before we moved in. And it really represents what we stand for um, as a brand. And I think you know, we just got a couple of great press features on it. And it's just, it feels like a second home. We designed it that way, but I think it really, the idea came to fruition really nicely. Very cool. Um, how do you typically spend your day or, or even your week? I know, like you said before, recruiting is, is a pretty big priority. Uh, after that, how do you allocate your time? Yeah, so for me, I think, you know, motivating the team and making sure that you're getting the absolute most out of, out of, I mean, all the people that are that are here in the office and, and remote is probably the most important thing on my, my list outside of, you know, recruiting. And, and so for me, it's a lot of spending time with people in one-on-ones, um, making sure that we have transparency in terms of vision and strategy throughout the company so that no matter if you're answering a phone call or you're, you know, trying to close a partnership, you understand the purpose of, you know, what is that greater goal and why are you here? Um, and I think that really keeps people motivated because it's, it, it goes beyond just the sort of day-to-day -day of what you're doing. What advice would you have for someone else that was looking to build a platform, not necessarily in, you know, the interior design space, but any sort of platform in any other industry? Well, I'm always kind of an advocate for building a real business, and I think real businesses make money. And so I, I, would, I would say, like, try it out and, and see if you can monetize early. Um, I think if you if you are able to monetize and build something, even even a proof of concept that someone will purchase early on, when you do go out, if you do go out, and maybe you never need to to raise capital, it puts you in a a very different place. Um, I think building something, then you know scaling it and then trying to sell it is just a really difficult predicament to be in. And look, some people can do it really amazingly, but from my experience, is that you know, come up with the MVP that you can all, you can get someone to pay for right out of the gate and scale that way. How, how big is the typical project? Like how many hours? And I'm sure it depends on a ton of factors, but any, uh, any numbers that you can give us would be pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know the typical number of hours people buy, but I know that, you know, our sweet spot on clients range anywhere from budgets of about $10,000 up to, you know, we do commercial spaces for over a million dollars now. Um, okay. So it really does kind of run the gamut. And, and again, it's about matching the client with the right designer, with the right lifestyle services and, and support services, and then making sure to layer on the home pause concierge so they feel like they're taking care of the entire, you know, all along the way. Right, right. Did you guys offer that concierge service from the very beginning? Yeah, it's right from the beginning. I mean, from, from the beginning, every client is assigned to not only a designer, but they're assigned a representative from the concierge as well as a project manager. So someone who is going to, a client success manager who's going to be there the whole way to make sure that, you know, if anything happens or, or there's any anything, even a sensitive situation that a client isn't, doesn't want to discuss with a designer, they have someone, the same person here through the whole project um, that, uh, that they can talk to. What's your second biggest city or air area outside of New York? Uh, San Francisco and L.A. Okay. are our was, next two. And they're, those are the two I was going to guess, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of money and probably certainly in San Francisco, a lot of, you know, uh, young geeky guys that probably don't know much about interior design either. So they're probably looking for all the help they can get. And I would see where that. Yeah, makes those a lot have been sense. really great markets. Um, again, I, you know, we're, we're kind of trying to scale them to be the size of New York City. New York, New York I think it's because it's our home base. It's just been a, a really strong piece of our growth as a company. But I think New York is also interestingly like the hardest market to tackle in terms of customer experience i think new yorkers are their standards are <laughs> pretty high <laughs> um and so i think it was a great market for us to start in because it made we had to make sure our quality was really premium before we started to explore expanding now how did you guys build the first version of the website did you hire uh, developers or are you a technical person yourself no no when we first started my, my co-founder co and i like he he actually was a, sort of a an engineer hobbyist of sorts, and so um, he, you know, he built the first version and the first couple of versions. Actually, it was it was really fortunate that we had that because I am not a website uh, builder. <laughs> <laughs> and then, how many times have you guys changed things around on the website? 
Oh God, I, I can't even Non-stop. count it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're always iterating, right? Now that we have a team of, of product and engineering people, it's it's uh, you know it, that's part of the startup process is to, is to constantly iterate and test and iterate and and you know rinse and repeat. Now I'm guessing that other cities around the world have the same problem. You know, people looking for interior design help. So, will you guys go international at some point, or or have you already? Yeah, I think international is it's, it's definitely on the roadmap. Um, there have been companies elsewhere that have kind of tried to copy what we're doing, and I think, you know, what what people what people experience is that it's really difficult to scale a local marketplace. You know, when you want to put someone into someone's home, there are so many different constraints: schedules, geography, you know, traffic patterns. There's so many different constraints that that managing to scale that kind of business is, is challenging. And so I think, you know, once we can really I think, you know, get our footing or, or increase our footing rather here in the U.S. is international expansion is definitely imminent. So let's take someone in New York. What percentage of their business, new business coming in is is from home polish, you think? Uh, for our designers? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it ranges. Some designers find us when, you know, right out of school or when they have their first job and they're thinking of kind of going out on their own. Um, and some designers run, uh, you know, they've been doing this for a decade or more, and they run now their entire business through us. So, you know, wow. for us, ultimately, we're trying to get to the place where we're powering designers' entire businesses. So we're not just providing clients, we're providing all the support services uh, that they need to scale so that, again, every minute of their day is spent designing, uh, and we can handle all the logistical operational stuff that they don't need to worry about. That's awesome. Right. So they don't need to have a, a team of three assistants helping them with all the stuff <laughs> that you guys essentially do for them. Exactly. Perfect. Anything else that we skipped over that you wanted a chance to talk about or mention? I think your questions covered pretty much everything. <laughs> <laughs> I try to get, I try to be pretty good at that. Uh, in terms of Instagram, so you guys have a massive following, 1.4 million. I'm actually looking at the Instagram account right now. Any strategy uh, for other businesses that would love to try to, you know, grow their Instagram following as well? Yeah, I think you, it's really, and this is nothing new or groundbreaking. It's like being authentic and being consistent. For for Instagram, you know, the your followers want a consistent experience. And so for us, if you, you notice as you scroll down, the caliber of the photos, the way we write our captions, and honestly, the authenticity of, you know, the fact that we tag all of our designers and photographers in our photos. We want to make sure that as, as artists, they're getting credit. And sometimes, you know, someone could make the argument, well, you know, maybe that's not in the best interest of home polish. And, and maybe in some cases that's true, but we truly believe that if, if we want to, you know, if our designers are a, a really important subset of our customers, then we need to act as a brand in their best interest. Yeah, these pictures are all really, really high quality. Um, <laughs> Cool. Uh, I guess last question is, what is your favorite thing about being the founder of Home Polish? Oh, my favorite thing is by far the people. I think I get to come in every single day and there's always a unique challenge and it's, and it's almost always involving people. I mean, ultimately, we are a business of people both because we're a company naturally and because interior design is so people focused. Um, and, you know, every day I walk through the door and I don't know exactly what's going to happen. Um, and and I love that. I think my life is pretty regimented in terms of my schedule. And so it's kind of nice to have that little bit of serendipity injected into my day. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Noah. I really appreciate you taking some time and, and coming and talking to us about all this cool stuff that you guys are up to. Uh, what's the best way for us to connect with you online? Do you use any social media channels? Yeah, I, I have. Uh, we have Home Polish's Instagram. Obviously, I have my own Instagram, which is just Noah without an H um, underscore Santos. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty reachable on most social media channels, honestly. Okay. Awesome. Well, once again, thank you, man. Uh, loved having you on the show and certainly I look forward to staying in touch with you over, you know, the next couple of years and see where you guys go from here. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. Thanks so much. You got it, man. Talk to you soon. All right. Talk soon. Bye. Bye.